All right, so this is going to be my Godzilla Q&A. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for sending me questions over on Patreon. And as always, if you guys would like to be part of Patreon whenever I do these Q&As, um, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, where you guys can hit the second tier. This is a second tier video um, thing. And yeah, you guys, can ask, you guys can start asking me questions whenever I do post a Q&A. So the Q&As are usually just like a topic. And I figured since it's Godzilla's 69th anniversary, nice, I figured I would do a Q&A on Godzilla, you know, on Godzilla. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started with, um, with the video. Um, so yeah, got a few questions, I'm pulling them up right now, aren't we so professional on this channel? We are, we are, we are professionals, we are... We are actual professionals. So professional. Look how professional I'm going. I am professionally moving along. I am professionally pulling up the questions in a professional manner, in a very professional form. Professionally, of course. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, we're going so professionally. We are absolutely professionally crushing it. And let's professionally get into the... Uh, into the questions. Starting off with our first question, David Deister, who asks, if Godzilla did cross over with Hercules from Disney canon, what would it be? A fucking bloodbath. It is funny to note that technically Godzilla has encountered um, Hercules in a battle with the champions way back when Godzilla was a part of the Marvel Universe back in the 70s. He encountered Hercules alongside another group they were really trying to push called the Champions, which was a team consisting of Hercules, Ghost Rider, Black Widow, and Angel and Iceman. Yeah, there's a team for you. <laughs> anyway. So, um, they did fight, but if this was the Disney canon, I would say that this would be a utter fucking bloodbath. There's no other way to say it. It would be an absolute fucking nightmare for Hercules. Because, yeah, Hercules is all powerful, but, like, Godzilla has proven that he can kill the Greek gods. I mean, go look at Rage Against Time, where he soloed the Greek pantheon faster than Kratos did in three games. What Kratos did in three games, Godzilla did in, like, three pa in like three minutes. <laughs> um, yeah. So there, so thank you for that question, David. Moving on now to Hunter Johnson, who asks, In a crossover between Steven Universe, King Kong, and Godzilla, do you think Steven would transform into his monster form to help Kong and Godzilla battle someone like Destroya? Uh, sure, I guess. Like, I, sure, that's really all I can say, is that, sure, but then they'd have to end up battling Steven because it's his trauma monster. So, there's no real way to, like, really say, like, oh, yeah, this would be a good thing, it'd be a cool thing, but it would also be, like, why? Why would he just let all of his trauma out and become a mindless monster where he would just fight Godzilla and Kong next? Seems kind of dumb. Anyway, second question. Could Godzilla live and survive on the Boiling Isles? And, yeah, he could. I don't think the boiling water of the Boiling Isles would be that much of a problem for him. Um, he would definitely be seen as a titan. Um, of, if this was legendary, he would be considered a... He, he would be a titan. But, yeah, Godzilla would, is, would be seen as a titan. And I think, like, the Emperor's Coven would see it as a problem because titans are gods to them. So, to ha like, Belos would see kind of a problem of having Godzilla on the Boiling Isles because he's a literal god. Both, yeah, in both meanings. He's a literal god. Of course he's going to have... That means it's a challenge to his rule. So, therefore, he's going to try to find a way to be like, oh, it's a false, you know, it's a false titan, you know. He's going to try to sway the masses, but honestly, the masses would kind of see it as... Yeah, Godzilla, uh, you know, it's a, it's an actual li living titan, of course. Like, that's really cool. And why do we need Belos when there's a dead... He, all he says is it's a dead titan. We have a new living titan to really follow. So there you go. So, um, and your third question is, who would win in a fight between Godzilla or Smog? Um, Godzilla. Obviously, Sm uh, Smog doesn't even come close to the size Godzilla is, first off. I mean, yeah, he can fly, but Godzilla could just literally just blow him out of the sky and just n and just send him careening to the ground to stomp on him. There's no way Smog could, you know, Smog could, could literally fight Godzilla. 
His fire is not even close to the level of, uh, of power that Godzilla has faced. I mean, he's taken, like, gravity beams to the face and still kept trucking. So I don't know what to tell you, my dude. Godzilla would literally um, just smoke him. There's no way to other, uh, no way to say it. Um, anyway, so, so thank you for those questions, Hunter. Moving on now to the Mount Vernon kid who asks, "I never asked you this before, but were you a fan of the Godzilla 1999, uh, the uh, Godzilla 98 cartoon?" Yeah, absolutely. As much as like, I also have like a shall we say, an appreciation for the Zilla movie from 98. I still don't like it, but, like, if you don't look at it like it's... Own, if you look at it as its own thing and not a Godzilla movie, it's actually tolerable. And I do... And I put that lightly. But the 98 movie is... Like, the 98 animated show was the shit. It was a fucking awesome show. I absolutely loved the shit out of that show. From the monster designs to the, you know, the fights, um, the characters themselves, like, looking back, I actually have, like, to, to better answer your question real quick, uh, Chris, uh, let me just whip, excuse me while I whip this out. That answer your question? This is the entire complete series. This is the entire series of Godzilla 98 for you, uh, uh, from, uh, what was it, Mill Creek or Anchor Bay? Nope, Mill Creek. And although the quality, I will say, for the uh, for the DVD collection is, um, is shit, it's the, it's the best we got. Anyway, so, yeah, the show was great, and I've got some other questions from the show, about the show, so I'll get into those later, but yeah, to answer your question, yeah, I love the show, Chris. Second question, over the year, all the years, what are your favorite designs of the Big G? I would say some of my favorite designs... Well, first and foremost is the Heisei design from the 90s. That's probably my ideal Godzilla. That's whenever I think of Godzilla. That's the Godzilla I think of when it comes to uh, his design. Um, I would say that... Um, another design I really enjoyed is the singular point design. I just love, like... It feels like Godzilla, but something different. Like, it just feels like something, like, new, but from... It's, like, new, but familiar. Um, so the Godzilla singular point design, I also really love... Um, of course, 54. You can't go wrong with the original 54 design. Another one is the Godzilla from uh, Godzilla vs. Mothra. The head, the grimace-looking face... The grimacing face. I shouldn't say, like, grimace face, because then you're just going to think, like, grimace from McDonald's. But, um... I, I, like, whenever I think of the Showa era of Godzilla's, that's the Godzilla design I usually think of. That or the Godzilla vs. King Kong facial design. Um... But, yeah. Those are just a few. I would also say, like, now that I think about it, I also really... Uh, like... There's another design I really like. I mean, I do love all all Godzillas are uh, all Godzillas are kings. <laughs> I'm that's fucking stupid. <laughs> anyway, um, but yeah, third and your third question. Imagine if Godzilla could talk. What do you think he would sound like? Well, I think he would sound like something like this. If anything is to go off of from the ever so love Godzilla versus Gigan when they actually talked in the movie. Hey, unget us. What do you want? Something funny going on. You better check. Okay. That's a legit scene in the movie, guys. Yeah. And then it's followed up with, Hey, Angelus, come on, we gotta go. <laughs> um, yeah. That was so fucking weird. But yeah. Like an act now... I never really imagine, like, I don't like the idea of Godzilla talking, but if I was to give him, like, an actual voice, it would probably be, like, something old, like, a voice actor who could do something, like, old and ancient, like, or something wrathful. Like, I would say, kind, now that I think about it, I'd kind of give Lance, if he were still alive, Lance, uh, Lance Reddick would actually be perfect for Godzilla. 
Like, there you go. Lance, if he... Rest in peace, Lance Reddick. But, like, if he were still alive, Lance Reddick would be my Godzilla voice. I think he would do really good at it. Anyway. So thank you for those uh, for those questions, uh, Chris. Moving on now to Jason Voorhees, 2011. Uh, what other kai... And his first question is, what other kaiju... From Godzilla, would you like to see get an upda get updated the same way they did so for Gigan and now Megalon in the upcoming movie? I would like to see King Caesar get updated. I would love to see King Caesar get an update. Like, because apparently, according to the lore, there's actually like biomechanics in his body. So I'd love to see like him get like bla like him get blasted in a fight with Megalon or something. Or in a fight with Mecha Godzilla, and like you see the biomechanics in the side of his face. I would also love to see more of his, like a more pronounced version of his gem and a more slimmer body because King Caesar is more of a ninjutsu kind of. He's more like a grappler. He doesn't have like an energy attack. He just reflects it back. So what I would love to do with the redesign of King Caesar is probably make him slimmer and have like a like kind of like a kung uh, like kind of like a Bruce Lee body where he's like he's got muscle but he's like slim. So that gives him like more ad uh, more agility. Like that gives him more. Um, like, more mobilities when he's moving. Also, like, he could get on all fours and, like, jump like a dog. Uh, there you go. Just a few ideas. I'd also like to see an upgrade on Titanosaurus. Not make him, like, a sea serpent or a mosasaur. I would say, like, more... Like, kind of more dinosaur... Like, more prehistoric. He is a dinosaur, so maybe, like, have him... With a more... Maybe give him more features of not make him like totally like a like a plesiosaur, a mosasaur, but give him more like a more primal look, like a more like this is an ancient being. I don't know how to describe that. I, I like that's the best I can say. But there you go. Those are just two that come to mind. Um, second question: What myth mythological monsters would you like to see Godzilla fight at some point? Well, I do know that Godzilla it did do battle with the Kraken in the Here Be Dragons uh, comic book. The other one I would lo like, we did have Godzilla fight the Hydra and Orochimaru in um, the Godzilla Rage Against Time. As for others, I would love to see Godzilla fight the Norse monsters. I would love to see Godzilla do battle with the monsters from Norse mythology. You know, like Fenrir, Jormungandr, the Frost Giants, Ymir, um... Needhog, the you know Skull and Hati, the the list goes on. Like the it, like he's bat he's conquered Greek monsters, he's conquered Japanese monsters. Now it's time for him to go north and conquer the um, the Norn monsters. Like I'm waiting for IDW to come out with like Godzilla Ragnarok and have him do battle with the monsters from you know Norse mythology and like uh, and uh, the gods of Norse mythology and the, the more importantly the monsters from Norse mythology because how cool would it be to see Godzilla like do battle with Jormungandr um, just a thought <laughs> anyway thank you for that question uh, and your final question is if Godzilla ever received a new video game how exactly would you like to see it done well, I think it would be really good if they did like if they followed the example of the uh, of the perfectly underrated game, King uh, Kong. I mean, Skull Island: Rise of Kong. I think that would no. I can't even finish that sentence. Don't do Rise of Kong with Godzilla. Also, not another fucking mobile game. How about that? Would that be would that be too much to ask? An another not another fucking mobile game. It'd be uh it'd be really nice if we didn't get that. Um, but. I would say another fighting game. I know that's kind of generic, but like that's got a, like it, like a Godzilla fighting game. Just make it like it's the perfect bread and butter. Like obviously we had that uh, the first two games. I'm not counting Unleashed. That game was not good. Um, but the the two games we got Melee and Save the Earth were the goats. Honestly, they were the straight up. Uh, they were the goat. Uh, they were both comparatively the goat. Um, but yeah, I would also like, maybe it, like, it would be kind of cool to add, like, if we did this again, if we did another fighting game, we could add monsters from the multi, from the monster verse, not just God, legendary G Godzilla or Kong, but also like legendary Mecha Godzilla, Behemoth, Tiamat, all of those monsters and mix them in with the Toho monsters. I think that would be like a cool marriage of the two and have the two universes collide. 
So thank you for those questions, Jason. Moving on now to Tom Hibbert, who asks, if you had to introduce Zilla, a.k.a. 1999 version of Godzilla, into the MonsterVerse, how would you do it? I would actually keep it that he is a... So I would have instead of a, he's a radiated lizard, I would say that he's a subspecies of Godzilla. He would be known as Zilla because he's not a true Godzilla. It'd be kind of like in the fact that like um, lizards and snakes are are distantly related. He's a subspecies. He's a different species of Godzilla that came from like the um, like a more like a more aquatic more. A, a different, like a different terrain, like a more irradiated terrain, but more, like there was less predators to battle. So his body is different, and it was more like for running than it was for combat. But he is capable of combat, and he's more subterranean, obviously because Zilla can dig. I so that's how I would. Uh, that's kind of like right off the top of my head, I would do something like that um, for a new version of Zilla. Um, also, as an added bonus, I would have that monarch. Um, New, first discovered the creature in 1998 near like he was uh, he was like causing low-level earthquakes near new york kind of as a reference to the original movie um your second question is do you prefer godzilla has a as a villain or an anti-hero yes <laughs> like yes to both honestly like i i like godzilla as a villain i also enjoy him as an anti-hero i just like godzilla it's kind of cool to see him as a villain and also is fun to see. It's just Godzilla in general. So the answer to your question, yes. <laughs> anyway. So third question. Was there a moment from any Godzilla film that made you go, what the fuck? I mean, the first time I watched Godzilla vs. the Smog Monster we had a lot of what the fuckery moments. Same with Godzilla vs. Gigan when they were talking. Just to name a few. What? Uh, uh, just to name some of the what the fuckery I have uh, I've encountered. Also, the entire anime trilogy made me go, what the fuck? Just not in confusion, but more of just virulent anger. <sighs> so there you go, guys. So there you go. Um, thank you for those questions, Tom Hibbert. Moving on now to Alistair Bondman, who asks, Which of the kaiju or, monster or mutants, as they were called in the Zilla Godzilla animated series cartoon from the late 90s, do you like to the most, and what do you think should be entered into the Godzilla real Godzilla rogues gallery? Um, I would say, like, the sea, the, uh, uh, the sea rex the squid monster, that's the first one that comes to mind. The sea rex would be really cool. I would also like to see El Gusano, the, the worm. He'd be really cool. The uh, King Cobra, another fun one, because I don't think we get a lot of snake kaiju. So it would be, like, all we really have is Manda and him. So it'd be kind of nice to have, uh, and maybe the, the war bats, maybe, like, that, maybe that counts. But, like... I would say um, King Cobra would be cool. Uh, oh, the uh, I can't remember its name, but like the the biomechanical trash monster that like was consuming matter. It was like a big blob. I would like to see that. I think he would be really cool to be added to. Something like that. Just just to name a few. Second question: If you were given the opportunity. To create several new kaiju or monster, uh, monster for the monster verse or any other Godzilla universe, by but by following by, but by following uh, prompts like dreams and nightmare, rot, pro, rattlesnake. What would you call these monsters and gimmicks? Oh, okay. Like basically, like their prompts for like this is the d general design we want. So go do it. Okay, I see what you're. I see what you're trying to say. So the first one would be like a dream and nightmare monster. Gabara was meant to be a dream and nightmare monster. So maybe like a new version of Gabara. Um, some, uh, maybe something like that. Maybe like a Freddy Krueger of Kaiju. Uh, Rattlesnake one, definitely give it more of like a mixture of like a thorny, mix, a cross between a thorny devil and a rattlesnake. Give it like, it can shoot, instead of like how thorny devils can shoot blood out of their eyes, it can shoot like, a sub uh, an acidic substance from the bottom of its eyes um and also capable of like using its kind of like in tr the graboids from tremors where it would use the spines to like pull itself along when it's underground when it digs underground uh a crow kaiju definitely just a giant crow but probably give it like it it's very like how crows are in real life um this crow kaiju would be intelligent probably one of the smartest because corvid's 
you know, crows and ravens are in exceptionally smart. Um, just kind of off the top of my head, that's what I think. Um, a rotting kaiju? I would say, like, maybe it's a, a, monar a monarch or, or the Toho universe was trying to resurrect a monster that was long dead, and it's just, like, all just Frankenstein and, and all twisted. Um, yeah. Those are just right off the top of my head, but... Thank you for that question, uh, Alistair. And your third question is, since Mothra doesn't get a lot of love in the Godzilla franchise, um, in that she typically gets her own... Um, she gets owned by Godzilla in the Showa comics and movies, how would you improv improve the Queen of the Monsters? Um, definitely new powers. I would also have it that, like... I think I think a lot of people like underplay how powerful Mothra is, so definitely play that up. I would also have it that it wouldn't need, we wouldn't need to focus on the egg until like later in the movies. Definitely focus more on Mothra herself, um, focusing more on the like the eggs at, um, on their own. Just a few ideas. As for her own rogues gallery, yeah, def she needs that. She d and all she really got was two. She only really, really well, and it was Mothra Leo. Um, the other two, one was a variation of Ghidorah, so was the other one. But thank you for those questions. So, I and Batra can't forget Batra. But they became allies by the end. So maybe, maybe like a spider kaiju or a wasp kaiju to combat her. Just that's what I'm kind of thinking. But anyway, thank you for those questions, Alistair. Moving on now to Bill McLaughlin, who asks, "How would Godzilla fare against Cthulhu and the old ones?" Ah, that's a tale as old as time. Godzilla doing battle with the great old ones. Um, I think it would be really cool to see Godzilla do battle with Cthulhu and the other great old ones because Godzilla is just like a power that's beyond our understanding. So to see him, you know, go head to head with like beings like that would be my like to see if they could like reach into Godzilla's mind and see like just the horrors he's capable of. Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. So your second question is, of all the Godzilla foes, who do you feel is underrated? I'd say Megalon, because he's kind of a, just a dumb bug. Um, another one I feel would be... Like, Megalon always gets the shaft, right? Like, Gigant... And I'm not even, a, a, like, trying to, you know, fight the good fight for Megalon. I'm just saying, like, personally, Megalon... Maybe Megalon will get his due in this upcoming short that's coming up. But, like, yeah, Megalon could use some love. He, ne he needs some love... Um, I would also say another one that's underrated is Biolante. Yeah, Biolante's another one. Biolante, if, if you want to talk about underrated villains, Biolante was, even though technically you could make the argument in, in Godzilla vs. Biolante that she's the hero, um, I would say she's another... Megalon and Biolante are probably the two most underrated villains because no one really talks about them, and I, it would be really cool to see them get new... Uh, and I know Megalon's getting a new light, but yeah, it'd be kind of cool to see Biolante get some love, too. Um, and your third question is, Bill, which versions of Godzilla's origins do you prefer, the original or the Monsterverse? I've always been a proponent of the original, like, atomic um, origin. I've never really liked the idea of Godzilla being... A, like, I do enjoy the Monsterverse, but, like, I've always preferred, like... I don't like the idea of Godzilla being an ancient species as much as I love those movies. I've always been the proponent of Godzilla being the testament of man's, you know, folly. Like, that's what I... I think a lot of people can agree is that, uh, like, we all prefer Godzilla, seeing Godzilla as, like, the testament of mankind and how... It, uh, and how our, re our reckless abandonment of science and nature um, can be laid at our feet in the most destructive way. So, to a so lo and I could go further and further into it, but to a but long story short, um, original ending. I mean, original origin. So, thank you for those questions, Bill. Moving on now to uh, Gordon Rajani, who asks, favorite era of the Godzilla movies? My favorite era of the Godzilla movies is Heisei. I know that's kind of a basic bitch answer, but really, like, Heisei was always an era I would come back to again and again and again. Not to discredit the Showa Millennium and even Reiwa, 
or legendary. I mean, legendary is technically a part of the Ray Wah era. Um, but I will say that, like, when I think of Godzilla, it's the Ray, it's the Heisei era. Some of my favorite movies are from the Heisei era. Um, most of my favorite movies are from the Heisei era. That's my go-to Godzilla design. I think the stunt, or the um, suit effects are awesome. Yes, it does get beam badly with Space Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla too, but I digress. It's still, I, it's still my favorite. <sighs> Second question: Did you ever uh, watch the Tokusatsu series Zone Fighter? Uh, I did not. I have not. I've seen. Well, I've seen parts of it. I have seen. Um, parts of the of the series. I've seen parts of the series that I, I've never seen full-blown episodes. I did hear that they were uploaded on YouTube for a short time, but Toho took them down. So, I, 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 I'm, cons I'm confused as to why Toho doesn't want to re-release Zone Fighter. Um, and it's, he's just got to find bootlegs and, and DVD rips. Uh, or, you know, bootleg rips of Zone Fighter. Yeah. Um... And your final question is, what is your opinion on the worst Godzilla movie, not counting the Roland Emmerich one? I mean, does it need to be said, Godzilla's Revenge? Yes, it's the typical answer, but, like, Godzilla's Revenge was just a shit show. It was just an absolute shit show. Um, to, uh, like, to... It, it's, it's, it's low, but it's, like, zero budget. It's a clip show. The plot makes very little sense. And this is where, when you think of how bad Minya is, I think a lot of people point to this movie. At least in, in Son of Godzilla, you can make the argument that that ending between him and Godzilla was was it was worth it. Like, it was the big um, story payoff. But, like, here? Nah, son. Didn't, it, it didn't fly. It didn't work here. Ugh. So, thank you for those questions, Gordon. Um, moving on now to Cyborg one uh, um, 19.99 who asks, who would win? Godzilla versus Fin Fang Foom. Well, here's something that we should have seen in the um, in the Godzilla Marvel comics, right? Like, this was the big one of seeing Godzilla do battle with Fin Fang Foom. And, I mean, as much as I love Fin Fang Foom, he does get his ass kicked a lot. While he is intelligent and he's capable of speech... He does get his ass kicked a lot by people smaller than him. So, and Godzilla, not to say Godzilla's stupid, but, like, Godzilla probably would whip his ass. I'm just saying, like, Godzilla definitely would be all up in that ass whipping it. <laughs> That's just my personal opinion. Um, and your final question, your second and final question is, how would you do a Godzilla-Cloverfield crossover? You see, I would, uh, I would do... How I would do it is that um, what would happen is that Godzilla senses like the temporal rift that brings the monsters to the, the Cloverfield monsters to Earth. And essentially what happens is that Godzilla um, goes is like kind of like humanity's last hope. And he's just kind of going around just destroying these monsters. But as we can see, um, the Cloverfield monsters just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So Godzilla's like first he's taking them out when they're small and then he's seeing like them get like even like he's encountering ones that are like just absolutely titanic like he is just challenge like forcing himself to take on monsters that are like three times his size and um they would like i would even have that these monsters are capable of like evolving to the point of um like, he, they would be, like, evolving to the point of, um, like, holding their own against his attacks. So it would just be, like, Godzilla would have to fight, like, just different ways to combat the Cloverfield monsters. I don't know, like, that's just kind of, like, that's something like, like, something like that would be how I would, um, go about it. All right, so there we go, guys. That is pretty much it for um, uh, that's it for the Q and A. I'd like to thank everyone for uh, sending me questions for um, for this Q and A. Sorry, I lost my train of thought because I I did this like thirty like a half hour straight. 
But yeah, you guys tell me in the comments below. Uh, what would you guys think of this? What, and as always, if you guys would like to have your questions answered for the next Q&A subject, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, where you guys can start sending me questions once I... And it would be the second tier. That'll also allow you access to the other videos that are exclusively on there as well, and all the stuff to the first tier, which is movie reviews and polls. But yeah, I di uh, but I digress. Um... I'd also like to thank everyone who did send me questions for this Q&A. And yeah, so like I said, if you want to check, be part of the next Q&A, and when it's announced, just hit the link below, head on over to my Patreon, hit the second tier. And if you want to send me requests for videos, just hit the third tier. Third tier. I can do math. <laughs> anyway, so once again, hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.